What's up everybody, a Sparrow with a Gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Engineer's Inspiration series. We're starting things off today with the Type 34 Merchantman. Now this is an interesting build to me because of the lore behind it in the description. In that it's basically made to be an obsolete ship and I find that to be very intriguing. Uh, because essentially it's an antique in the lore of the ship. So that's why it's got the rustier, battered exterior and all that kind of stuff. But it does still have some decent functionality when it comes to survival and so on. So obviously in the real gameplay of the ship, um, it serves a bigger purpose. But it's interesting that it's designed to kind of be a, an antique because it lists the museum plaque um, excerpt in the description, which I thought was in, uh, kind of intriguing. There are slots for other ships. Uh, there's a mining, there's a shuttle, and there's a something about maintenance, I think. Um, so as you can see, this is for auxiliary craft. It did say in the description they were coming soon, uh, but it does have a couple slots for auxiliary craft, which is pretty cool. I kind of like the... Um, the rough and tough build to it, though. I've, I've talked before about the industrial kind of look on some of these ships, and the uh, I'm normally not a big asymmetrical person. I'm usually more of a fan of symmetry, but I kind of like these two little um, clamp things off to the side, and this little nod or knob here, and then like the white stripes. It, it really... I kind of feel like it's very Star Wars-y, not necessarily in the hull design, because the hull design is a little rectangular or squared for Star Wars. They don't do quite as many of those types of ships, but the color scheme and style feels very realistic to me. It's something that I could totally see um, in some kind of sci-fi series as a merchant vessel or something, because... I don't know why, but in a lot of sci-fi we do have this asymmetrical, there's something over here and the stripes are over here and stuff like that. You actually, you see a lot of symmetry in the design of ships, but not necessarily in the detailing of them. The details always tend to be pretty asymmetrical in a lot of sci-fi series, particularly with stuff like Merchant or cargo vessels, and I think that comes from the need for function over form, essentially. But it's like this, we've got this little capsule design here at the bottom, stuff like that. Now one cool feature, I think is cool anyway, as you can see it's mainly if not exclusively hydrogen powered, but it can do planetary using the, bo the, the back thrusters. I was going to say the bottom, but they're not exactly the bottom, they're more of the back thrusters. And so you can kind of see it here, how the doorway is situated, as well as on this side, where we have... where did it go? Here it is. A, a flight seat that's, that's uh, vertically aligned. So essentially they have a planetary aligned setting so that you can um, turn the ship vertical and then fly that way. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, because of the idea behind it might be difficult to try and back the ship up, so let's just have a different flight seat. So it, it essentially looks like the whole interior is vertical, which was not how I expected things to go. I thought there would be a flight seat set up for it, um, but it actually looks like the whole thing is aligned that way. And then there's probably going to be a flying flight seat, which is aligned horizontally. Um, but I like it. It's It's got that kind of rough and tough charm to me. Um, I've yet to try and build... I usually like the higher tech, not the grungier utility type look on a ship. So I haven't personally ever really tried to design one. Turn off the auxiliary craft engines before engaging main vessel thrust. Failure to comply with safety regulations will result in disciplinary actions. Ship safety is every crew member's responsibility. Um, unless you're me, then you just open doors and let the air out and cause all kinds of problems. But, um, so we have hangar doors. And it actually seems like a pretty decent hangar here as well. This is on the underbelly of the, the main ship. And I kind of like how the refinery and stuff is exposed. Um, what is this? Oh, jump drive. Okay. It almost looked like two merge blocks, and I was like, wait a minute, what is going on here? 
Um, and then the connection connections go to, man, three hydrogen tanks per thruster. Those things probably eat a lot of hydrogen. Um, but yeah, so I like the... it's got a nice roomy hangar, especially depending on the size of the drones and stuff that you're dealing with. Um, but yeah, I like it. I, I, I kind of like use, not necessarily even using, but going through showcasing these more um, merchant utility type vehicles that have a bit more character and they're a bit more rough around the edges. Their parts are exposed, but they're like battered, but they've been through stuff. They're weathered, they're seasoned. Um, I just never could quite get in the mindset of building one. So hats off to the builders for that because you know, anytime, anytime somebody does things that I have a hard time doing, I always feel like, good for you. And that's usually why I'm complimenting most of the builders on the Inspiration series, because 90% of the stuff I can't do. <laughs> so, uh, I compliment people a lot. But, um, yeah, I kind of like it. It's, it's, it's like that, uh, it kind of has a Millennium Falcon feel to me. It's got that kind of... Um, rough and tough, scrappy kind of vibe to it, where it's like, I may not be, you know, the biggest, baddest ship or anything, but yeah, I can still fly circles around you. I, I, can, I can still I can still do work, you know. Um, that's kind of the vibe I get from it. So here's your actual, I'm guessing, main flying position flight seats. And then these are the planetary, or this is the planetary one over here. So you've got it kind of vertically aligned, which would make things easier for flying in a planet. That's that's actually a really cool... I like having both designs if you're going to use the thrusters like that, which is cool because it does cut down on... Um... <laughs> okay. I'm not even going to lie. This, this surprised me here. It's something about the font when I was standing like this walking for half a second. I really thought that said Retard braking control <laughs> That caught me completely off guard. Oh, man retro Braking control way better much better term um, I was like wait are they are they doing like a dummy proof braking control? That's hilarious. No, that's not what they meant That's pretty funny. I think it's pretty funny um, but yeah, so anyways, moving right along. So we've got the, uh, flight alignment, which is pretty cool. We, I doubt there's a whole lot going on here, because I don't see a whole lot of weaponry or anything like that. Um, there's a programmable block here, but I'm guessing it was renamed or something, because it's not there, so I'm not sure what that's supposed to be controlling. There was a couple programmable blocks. Um, I think... That's actually the retro braking, because in the description it said press 1 in the main seat, and I think, because it said it didn't have a whole lot of braking capability, I'm guessing because I only see two or four small thrusters in the reverse direction, so there's going to be some kind of configuration thing that was going to fire them differently or override them or something. I'm not sure how that works. Um, we'll just have to keep that in mind, that it doesn't have a lot of stopping power flying this way. Um, there's reverse thrust, main thrust, uh, main, main thrust, oh, that's increase and decrease, I guess. Why is main thrust disabled? That's weird. Um, maybe that's an override. Uh, merchant camera, dorsal, port, starboard, stern, ventral. Getting the hang of all of those, I kind of know what they are. Um, so let's give it a whirl. Let's see how, how it flies. So acceleration is very fast. Those those four large thrusters do a lot of work. But again, the four small ones, not so much. Now I'm going to see if um, retro braking. Let's just throw this on here. Why is there no run? should be a run command for that. That's odd. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Why? Am I missing something? I mean, I, I like to think I'm no slouch with programmable blocks. Why? Why would that not let me run it? I've never seen that before. I wonder if it's being controlled by a script somewhere. 
Interesting. Anyway, it does decelerate eventually. It's just something you'd want to keep in mind if you were docking or something that you're going to go a lot slower at deceleration. And the turning is actually not that bad. Um, granted, this is a cargo type vessel, I believe, and it's probably empty. So I don't know what it would fly like fully laden, but it's not a bad ship. It moves pretty good, especially for a transport cargo type thing. It's not really all that bulky or cumbersome. And I also like the small pedestal things for the turrets that it's got. I just found the turrets. I said it didn't have a lot of weapons, but it does have four Gatling turrets. And I kind of like the, the mounts that they have for it. That's pretty cool. That's a neat idea. So I think that's going to do it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so next up we have the... Ooh, I don't even know how to say this. Kiporos? Kiporos. Kiporos. I'm going to say Kiporos. Class salvage vessel. Now this is an interesting one to me because most ships are either strike ships, they're sal uh, not salvage, they're usually either cargo vessels, transport vessels, personal yachts, fighters, corvettes, frigates, whatever. You don't see a whole lot of salvage vessels though. And I found this one to be a little bit intriguing because of that. And I'm not sure, but I think I got it wrong in the way that I pasted it in. Um... Because I'm seeing the arrows. I mean, oh wait, is this a... Yep! I'm completely upside down. Alright, so I should be looking at it this way. There we go. That's better. I mean, it's hard to tell with builds like this where they almost look the same on the top and the bottom, but I figured the arrows were a pretty good indication. Um, it's actually pretty uh, all-around looking. Wow, that's a lot of thrusters. Holy crap, this thing's got to move. Or just be really bulky. But it's like the uh, the fact that it's got some oxygen farms back here. You've got grinders over here. There's refineries. There's connectors for landing pads. Like, there's a lot you could do with this ship. Its predominant feature is salvage. So you've got this bay here, which I'm assuming is the salvage bay. It takes in small debris and then has a big grinder bay on the inside. There's also some welders, supposedly. I'm guessing maybe the bottom. That's turrets. It's a lot of hydrogen tanks all over. Um, maybe the welders are in the hangar. We'll have to look for them a little bit more. But um, essentially, the, it's got grinders, it's got welders in some places. It's got some light armament, like the chain gun turrets and things. It's got cargo spaces. It's basically a salvage and resupply ship for other smaller vessels. Um, well, there's welders, grinders, welders. So you can repair small fighters, you can dock them, resupply them, yada, yada, yada. Um, so it's actually really cool. And it did say in the description that it can handle lunar environments if it's, un if it's empty, essentially. So I'm guessing the weighted down, it would be too much for it to... Uh, sustain the gravity in um, even in a even in a lunar setting, which is good to note. Um, what is this? Okay, so that's a window. All right, it's a little dim in here, but I'm gonna try and keep my headlamps off if I can. So we've got kind of like a security room here to clear whoever's coming through the airlock and a blast door or security door. What are they labeling it as? Uh, it just says hangar door, so I'm going with security door. You've got kind of a, a guard on this side, but at the same time you can keep this locked, so that could be a fail-safe. Um, Alright, we've got a kind of a reception area here. Meeting room B, main stairwell, salvage operation. Let's check out the salvage operation. That seems fun. Um, okay, so we've got a blueprint thing doesn't quite look like it may need to be aligned a little differently but a projector that's actually a cool touch I'm not sure if this is using oh it is using the blueprint okay I was gonna say I'm not sure if they've got a projection block under here or not but I guess it's coming off the actual table um, but uh, so here's the main grinder well if you will or that's uh, that main hangar door at the front of the nose. Grinders. 
Grinder pit lights. Ooh. Did I turn the lights on? Mine are off. I don't see the lights. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Um, and then entrance door. Can I turn the lights on now? I'm really not seeing any lights. Maybe they're out at the front. And then you turn all that on, and I wouldn't recommend falling in. It's a very bad day. <laughs> I'm still not... Wait. I clicked the light button and it closed. Weird. I It's probably got some kind of timer block configuration and I'm screwing with it. Um, but that's, I think, a pretty cool feature of the ship. Because you can actually take in small ships and things like that and grind them down. Which I thought was pretty cool. It's, it's kind of like a... Um, uh, kind of like a small unicron, if you will. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Um, Alright, what goes this way? I'm guessing this is going to head towards the bridge. This looks like another airlock. Okay. Oh, okay, so this is one of the side hangar doors. Oh, what is that up there? We got like a... Crew stations or something. It's interesting. And then... How do we get up there? Do we get up there? Is there a reason? Nope. Just for show, it looks like. Okay. That's pretty cool. I like the uh, extra cluttered... Um, cluttered blocks down there. That's pretty cool. Adds a little something to the, uh, to the hangars that you've got supplies and crates laying around. Okay, so we do have a brig. That's interesting. Oh, this is cool. Okay. I'm not sure I'd give prisoners access to grinders, but you know, <laughs> that's more of just a nitpick on the uh, the game itself of not being able to put a panel over that or something like that. But um, that's pretty cool. I like ships that have their own brigs and things. I think it makes it feel a bit more realistic because you would want some kind of security measure in case anybody boarded your ship or whatnot. Uh, looks like lockers. Okay, so this is kind of the load-up room. And this is the observation type thing on the underbelly, which this is cool. I like these kinds of rooms too, where you've got the little planters and kitchens and stuff like that. Those are always welcome. And I know that some people don't have the DLCs and stuff, but I will say I do think that's where these blocks really shine, is the ability to keep the build like vanilla, but still give you those living space type rooms. I think that's really cool. Um, Alright, we came down... Getting a little turned around here. We came down this way and then went that way. It goes this way. Ooh! Alright. Seems fun. Got hydrogen engines. Wow, this looks super industrial. We got hydrogen engines complete with... Uh, moving pistons and everything, you got reactors, oxygen tanks, the nice yellow glowing lights. This is very like engineering department. That's pretty cool. Programmable block there, locker room there. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, like worker hazmat suit type area to suit up from. Oh, wrong button. I have to click on the door. Okay. This way. What goes this way? Kind of like a seating area, I guess? Like a lobby? Or a waiting room? Not really sure on that one. Okay, and this brings us out to this spot. What does the meeting room look like? Oh, that's cool. I love rooms in spaceships with a view. I think that's really cool. Very impractical when you think of the actual technology behind it and how hard it is to. <laughs> to do that kind of stuff. That's why all the NASA ships have like little tiny glass windows. <laughs> but it's still really cool. It's a neat idea. Alright, up here on deck three we have a reactor and medic room. Let's see what this looks like. Okay. Oh! Alright, so they've got... This is an opening probably for maintenance. But then they've got kind of a glassed off, which is pretty cool. 
Um, I'm a big fan of that kind of stuff, too, where you have, like, stuff like reactors and things enclosed in their own room. Mainly because I always constantly think about, like, well, what if that reactor leaks? You know, you want to be able to seal it off. Now, granted, I think, personally, I know some people may disagree with this, but I think it'd be cool if uh, the game added something like that, where if a reactor gets damaged and you start getting that green glow off of the block that you can actually start losing health. That would be kind of cool, like it's a, a radiation leak. Uh, we have the officer's quarters here. Ooh, that's weird. Okay. It's kind of creepy. But, that's cool. Ma maintenance. Oh, a head. The D kind of got cut off there at the end and I was like, a head? What? Okay, so this is kind of the maintenance area. Oh, this is cool. I like this use of the uh, graded catwalks as kind of like a... Um... Man, I don't know why everything's getting jaggy all of a sudden. That's really weird. I don't know if you guys are noticing that. Probably, unfortunately. But I don't know what that's coming from, because this ship is not really the craziest build I've ever seen, so I don't know why it's getting laggy, and I don't think my system is doing much on the other behind the scenes stuff, but whatever. Uh, so we got a lot of different like maintenance areas and stuff here. Did I go this way? Okay, that's a cargo access. Got it. All right, so we did that. Don't think we went this way into the main stairwell. Maybe we have. Okay, this comes down to deck two. Okay, we were in the main stairwell. We just didn't go up enough. Okay, so this should put us back around... Oh, maybe not. I was gonna say, this should put us back around the main entrance, but that's more on deck two. All right, so we have a gravity generator, which is cool. Uh, got a, a view, but nowhere to go on that one. Guessing this is gonna be. Oh, this is actually the external. Okay, so this is where you get to the fighter bay. That's cool. I was gonna say that was the bridge, but I was very wrong. Airlock, toilets, airlock, lab. So again, I think this. Nope. This is something else. Oh, okay. This is the this is the bathrooms. And this is the bunks. Okay. Cool, cool. Nicely done, I like it. Uh, what do I do? That's gonna go back up to the landing pad. Okay, this I like. This is pretty cool. So I'm guessing this is kind of like an armory type thing. We've got a locker, we've got a screen, lab, whatever. But it's got that, like, you got the storage crates laying around, kind of, kind of cluttery, but then you got this, which kind of feels like it's a security barrier or something. Um, so that's kind of cool. Now, the weird part is I have no idea at this point where the bridge is. Because we've kind of been all over. And I have not been able to find it. This was the officer's quarters. That went to the maintenance area. I'm kind of at a loss as to where the bridge is. Maybe all the way down? But I thought we came from there. I'm really confused. Deck one. Nope. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Okay. I think I'm going to end up going... Oh, we didn't go this way. What's in here? Oh, this is just a... a room. Okay. Um, let's try taking a peek from the outside. I'm trying to figure out where it actually is. Okay, that looks like it would be the main bridge. <laughs> where is that? There's a door there. Okay. Oh. Oh, it must run adjacent to 
that area. Alright. So, we should be able to go back in here, go up, like, to the top deck. And then go through that um, crew quarters type area all the way to the end. And that should lead us to the bridge, I think. Maybe. Or we could just walk down the hallway and use the door, like normal people who do not lose track of where the doors are. <sighs> I digress. Anyway, so I kind of like the bridge too. It's pretty cool. But I really do like how everything looks very utility-based and um, kind of that function over form, but it still has a pretty cool form to it. It still looks pretty neat. And I didn't even realize I think those are landing gears next to the grinders and welders. Nope, those are blast blocks. Never mind. All right, so let's see if we take it for a test flight. Accelerates really quick. Not that that should be a surprise, because there's a whole bunch of thrusters back here. Um, it turns pretty good, too. It's not the fastest, but again, this is a salvage ship. You really wouldn't be expecting, like, a fighter maneuverability out of it. Uh, we've got cameras all over the place. Front, left, right, rear, side. Thruster controls merge blocks for different docking rings. Okay. Welders, grinders, that makes sense. Tanks and jump drives, antennas, so all pretty much just utility controls. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to do it for this one. Let's move on to the last one. Okay, and last but not least, we have... This is quite this is quite a wordy one. We have the Klangonautics Deep Space Explorer Astrographer, I'm not even sure if that's a word, Herald of Enzu. Yeah, um, so that's that's a thing. So this one, I honestly picked purely out of aesthetic reasons. It just it looked really cool and really crazy, and so I wanted to uh, give it give it a give it a look. Um, but apparently, I skipped through most of what in the description is labeled as fluff because it's basically the lore behind the ship. But I was looking at the armaments and other things. It's designed as a deep space exploring ship, and it's fitted with um, a couple of probes and other things like that, which I find intriguing. But mainly, I'm just kind of blown away with the design of the ship. The thing looks crazy. Um, and actually, looking at it, this is another one that I'm not sure if I didn't paste it in backwards because of where that flight seat is located, but um, I guess I'll have to figure that out at some point. But yeah, it it just it looked very like Bioshock to me. It was like steampunk, but kind of spacey, but kind of weird, and it just looked really cool. I also really, really like this use of the projectors to make it look like there's like energy conduits type thing. That's really, really cool. I think that's really clever. Um, because they basically framed it within blocks so that the projection was within a cylindrical shape so it ends up looking like they're energy conduits and things and, and like this kind of stuff on the top here and things. It's really well done. That's not something you really see all the time throughout a whole build, like it's a common theme, and this almost makes it look like energy shields kind of thing, or energy parts type of thing. So it's, it's really cool. I really like that aspect of it. But it also is kind of exposed, almost like a steampunk uh, blimp or something, which I also think is pretty neat. I'm still not really clear on where the main, like, entrance is, or even if there's much of an interior by the looks of things. There's a catwalk here that has a door. That's probably our best bet. Um, but we've got a lot of hydrogen tanks. It does look like it's predominantly hydrogen, but then there's ion as well. So that's interesting. Um, I like how they're kind of also on these rings out here. That's kind of a that's that's a pretty cool touch. There's a lot to this ship that I think is pretty unique. Definitely, definitely its own thing. Um, but let's see if we can't get in here. Nope. There we go. Stupid mag boots. 
and uh, give the interior a look-see, shall we? A lot of cryo chambers, like that's way more crew than I would have expected to be on a ship like this. I don't see that much interior. So to me, that's a lot of freaking people. I mean, it's three per row, and it looks like four? I'm gonna say four. So that's like 24 considering both sides. That's nuts. That's a lot of people for a ship this size. Um, I mean, granted, it's a deep space exploration, so that makes sense. You'd alternate and rotate different crew and set the thing on autopilot. Um, I almost wonder if... Oh, wow, this is, like, exposed. Is this exposed or is that glass? I think that's glass. I hope that's glass. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm gonna say that's glass, because that seems odd to have that open. But, uh, let's see... Where are we coming at? We came in around here, I think, right? So I guess further up is the rest of the interior. Sorry, I'm gonna make everybody dizzy again. Freaking stairs. Um, Alright, so we have controls here. I'm, I was guessing they weren't the main cockpit. Rocket launchers, Gatling gun... I didn't even see weapons on this. Uh, missile turrets, Gatling turrets, main thrusters... We've got a lot of groups here, but they all are blacked out. So, not sure what happened there. A lot of empty commands here. So I'm guessing there was some renaming and stuff that went on, and uh, the controls aren't fully functional for that stuff anymore. Until it gets changed or something. Um, I got oxygen generators there. Okay. I mean, oxygen farms, I guess, technically. Okay, so what goes all the way up here? Oh, we got some we got some wood tone. We got some wood grain. You guys know how much I like that. Um Okay, so we've got a TV here and a poker table here. That's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. Alright. So it's a place for the Actually the interior of this is kinda cool. I thought it was more rough and uh industrial from the cryo chamber area, but this is actually kind of Kind of more luxurious, if you will. This is kind of cool. Uh, we've got shower, bathroom, bunks, lockers. So I'm guessing that's basically your uh, basic crew quarters for when the people that aren't in cryo are up and about. Okay. Uh, same thing. The same thing. We got a kitchenette here. I'm guessing these are all going to be the same on this side. Alright, so what goes up the next floor? At some point we gotta get to the command deck. Ooh, we got a med bay with some MRI type machines in a lab. Probably useful. For, uh, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it in the, um, in the beginning, but this is a deep space exploration ship, but it was actually designed for a contest, apparently, that was going on for deep space exploration ships. Um, whatever is running these doors, they are not long enough timers. I'm just saying. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, so, another seating kitchenette area. This is actually pretty cool. Like, it, it's kind of chill. Which makes sense. You'd want something for deep space that's not super... Uh, like... stale? Or stagnant? Or whatever you want to call it. Uh, because if you did, then everyone would kind of go crazy and lose their minds. Which, I mean, anybody that's seen, like, alien movies... I got super dark here. Anybody that's seen, like, alien movies and stuff knows... Why can I not get out? And override. Let me out. Okay, so that's an airlock outside. And this is actually, like, a double airlock. Kind of makes sense. I mean, again, deep space. You want to be safe. There's no one out there to rescue you if something goes horribly wrong. But... Definitely a double airlock. Um, wait, there's a double airlock back there, but there's no airlock here. Wait a minute. Oh, this is glass. Oh, okay. That would be equally cool and absolutely terrifying to be in deep space and be in a glass tunnel. I mean, you guys know that I like it in terms of 
the, the builds, but in real life, that would be kind of unnerving. But pretty cool. I really like that because you even have the, um, the glowing energy, energon cubes, that's what I'm going to call them. <laughs> I don't know what they're supposed to be, kind of thing overhead as like, uh, it almost looks like it's, it looks like it's glowing and illuminating, which is really cool. It's a really neat effect. So we've got jump drives, lab, gyroscopes, and the reactors. We've got a safe zone. That's interesting. Did not expect to see that. Uh, couch, we've got another vendor, coffee machine thingy. Safe zone. Where is the- wait, where's the bridge? How did I miss that? I didn't see any walkways or anything that led to it. The bridge should be up there. Right? Have I got my- have I got my sense of direction screwed up or something? I really thought the bridge should be up there. Because there was a glass cockpit thing up there, right? Or is that up here? Oh, may oh, maybe that was up here. Okay. I missed it. Well, not really missed it, but misplaced the... Whatever. I found the stairs. <laughs> Let's just move on. Um, Alright, so we've got... Ooh, that's a cool screen. I wonder if that's custom or if that's part of the stock images. I don't think this, um... Wait a minute. What What is going on with programmable blocks here? What... Since when do you not have access to this? How do you program them, then? That's weird. Unless they've got a control programmable block somewhere that's disengaging this stuff? I don't understand where the, the stuff's going. That's really odd. Wait, gravity drive? Ooh, I do think it said something about it having a gravity drive. Interesting, okay. So we have program gravity drive on, thrusters, hydrogen thrusters, overrides it looks like, oxygen generators, connectors for various different things, but I don't think we're gonna need to mess with it. Uh, door overrides, merge blocks, laser... What is that? Oh, dish. Okay. Okay, so I don't see... Maybe it's in the connectors. Old, I don't see... In the in the description it mentioned a gravity... Or a, or a deep space probe. But I don't see it anywhere. I'm trying to figure out if I pasted this in the wrong way. I don't think I did, but I'll have to look. So, wait, I thought it was gravity driven. It actually accelerates and decelerates pretty quick, but again, I think the gravity drive is on, so I'm not sure. Let's try and turn off our thrusters. Okay, so we can't go anywhere. Hmm. So it is thruster driven. That's interesting. Um, and it does move pretty good. It's got a pretty good turning and uh, responsiveness, so I like it. I like it a lot. It's a very interesting ship, and the, like I said, mainly the whole reason I picked it was just the sheer design. It's very unorthodox. It's very interesting. Um, but with that, I think we're going to wrap things up here for today. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.